As we celebrate Independence Day, four veterans of World War II want to thank those who kept them safe in enemy territory years ago. They were recently reunited at the Yankee Air Museum in Ypsilanti thanks to the Experimental Aircraft Association. Jennifer Borez was there and has their incredible story. These men are called the Forgotten 500 in this book, but as more and more people hear their story, they're hoping the daring rescue mission and the men behind it will never be forgotten again. When he said pull that ripcord, I expected to pull the ripcord like a lawnmower handle. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> and it came out, came out in my hand. Now what do I do with this? More than 60 years have passed since these U.S. airmen parachuted out of a plane into enemy territory. I had the ripcord in my hand and I was free falling. Uh, but I immediately tried to get into the pack and get the pilot chute out. And I did that eventually. And the pilot chute went up, and when that went up, then the uh, much larger chute uh, went up, and my flight afterwards was all okay. Their mission, to bomb a German oil field. We bombed Ploesti so that they, Germans, would be penalized or for their lack of gasoline. But we paid one terrible price for that because the Germans knew what altitude we would come in. They knew the formation we would come in. They had us zeroed in perfectly, and we were like sitting ducks. For many of these men, that mission was never finished. They died when their planes crashed into the treacherous mountains in the Balkans of Yugoslavia. For the others, they were parachuting into the unknown. On my way down, I saw a flock of sheep. And when there's a flock of sheep, there's usually people around it. So I made up my mind that if I did get down without injury or anything, that's where I was going to head. They landed in German-occupied Serbia, but got help from Serbian resistance fighters led by General Draza Mihailovic, a U.S. and British ally. Those people had it pretty doggone rough and didn't have much to give, but they gave. And they kept the U.S. airmen safe for weeks until the U.S. government got word that there were 50 downed soldiers in Yugoslavia. The United States sent in OSS agents on a daring rescue mission known as Operation Halyard. 
Fremont resident Arthur Jabillion was one of those men who risked his life. They asked if I would go as a radio man. Well, immediately, did, did it in a heartbeat, I said, certainly. When he got there, he found not 50 airmen, but 250, and the number was growing. Well, we stayed, and uh, what turned out to be uh, uh, what started as a 10-day mission, we were there for almost six months and brought out 500 airmen in that time. One by one, C-47s landed on a makeshift runway that the Americans and Serbs built by hand. We were so pleased that uh, these planes were coming in, and this was what we had worked hard for in getting that airstrip built, and uh, it made us real happy. But when they returned to the U.S., the government said they couldn't share their incredible story. We weren't supposed to tell them how we got out. I think they wanted to keep that a secret. These veterans feel the U.S. didn't give General Mihailovich credit for helping them. By the time the rescue happened, the U.S. and Britain had abandoned Mihailovich as an ally. They say false information was given that he was a traitor and collaborating with the Germans. The U.S. and Britain began siding with communist leader General Joseph Tito instead. I don't know why the State Department will not admit that they made a mistake when they abandoned Mihailovich. He was, he was voted Man of the Year on Time Magazine in 1941, and then to be and hailed as a hero, and then turn around and call him a collaborator simply to justify uh, favoring Tito. When the war ended, they say Tito put Mihailovich on trial, quickly found him guilty, and executed him by firing squad. The hundreds of rescued airmen were devastated they couldn't testify at the trial. The only thing we ever wanted was the, to be to acknowledge that he did help us, that the Serbian people helped us, that he was not a traitor, that we made a mistake in backing Tito. We backed the wrong man. In 2005, Jabillion, Musgrove, and a few other airmen presented Mihailovic's daughter with the Legion of Merit. It was awarded posthumously to her father by President Harry Truman for aiding the American soldiers. It was a big step in a lifelong mission, fighting to expose the truth. We have a story to tell. We're, we may be small, but we're vociferous, and we will we'll tell it till the day we die, won't we? Amen. Jennifer Boris, News 11.